Hey guys, so we're jamming today with Ava Evrish from Viga. So Viga is a plant medicine company and they specialize in ceremonies. They cover the spectrum from bufo to peyote to psilocybin. It's very, very interesting. So this might be a conversation that you're thinking is super taboo. I know in most cultures, any plant medicines are quite taboo, um, make people feel uncomfortable. But I invite you to listen, whether this is something that you've been curious about or something that you've had judgment around, pop your earbuds in and listen, give it a, an open mind and just see what there is to see when it comes to being open to new opportunities, new experiences and new traditions. All right, enjoy. Ava, I am so excited to have you with us um, because you do something that is quite unique and certainly not something that everyone I've met has ever done, experienced, um, is their job title. I'm sure that when you hand people your business card that they probably, you know, uh, give you a look of they have no idea what you're talking about. So uh -huh. I can't wait to have you talk to us about Viga. Um, what it is and what brought you to that work yeah sure thank you very much for having me yay <laughs> well where would you like me to start yeah so i mean for everyone who's popping on and listening we're going to give you guys a heads up that this is this could be a conversation where you might want to grab some headphones if you've got little ones around um it depends on you know what, how open your family conversations are and there's some families where this would be an everybody conversation um, but for the purposes of us crossing our T's and dotting our I's for all of the internet, um, it might not be a bad idea for you guys to grab headphones because we are going to be talking about plant medicine and psychedelic experiences, which I'm also dying to hear from you because I know traditionally, and I'm talking about traditionally in current day culture, but not traditionally from ancestral perspective, that they have some taboo around them. Um, what you could talk about or what people think that they are. And I'd love to hear from you the way in which Viga, your company was started. And, you know, also what it's been like to be a person who is now dispelling the myths around plant medicine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's been quite a journey for me actually if you would have spoken to me 10 years ago and uh, <laughs> and said you'll be running a plant medicine business in 10 years time I would have laughed <laughs> I would have not believed you at all whatsoever um I mean I my life really started to change after a breakup in uh, 2016 and um yeah, it was, it was a, for me, it was one of the darkest times of my, my life. Um, I was with someone and we were going to have children. We were going to buy a house together. We were planning our wedding already. And then from one day to another, um, yeah, we, he broke it off. And um, yeah, it broke my heart and it definitely broke my, my dreams for sure <laughs> and um so i was um i really wanted to learn from the, from the experience and i wanted to learn about myself and about my patterns and why the breakup happens and, and grow from it and so i went on a journey of uh exploration self-exploration a journey within and um i read i read the book um stealing fire by Jamie Wheeler and Stephen Kotler. Oh, I don't know that. Uh, it's a great book. It's about flow, flow states. It's uh, yeah, really awesome. And that really, that completely changed my life, actually, that book. Well, that was the catalyst of changing my life. We wouldn't be talking if I wouldn't have read that book. I wouldn't have known Aubrey Marcus, et cetera, et cetera. So, because we, we know each other through, through Fit for Service. So, um, yeah um and in the book uh they mentioned uh um lsd and um microdosing lsd and at that point i had really nothing to lose <laughs> and i was like well why not 
I'll, I'll try that too. And I started microdosing uh, LSD at the time. And, um, but still felt like a deep kind of sadness within me. And um, the book also mentioned ayahuasca. I came across ayahuasca years before that. And it seemed like the worst thing you could ever take. Just the idea of um, sitting in ceremony and um, drinking a brew and then having to throw up because that's what happens a lot with ayahuasca and then have crazy visions. Yeah, I, I was like, nah, that's really not for me. I don't understand why people would even go there. But in my in my deep state of unhappiness, it just I suddenly got really drawn to it. And through a friend, I found out about um, an organization in the Netherlands. And uh, um, they happened to have a retreat uh, really close to where my parents live. And I decided to take the plunge and uh, yeah, try ayahuasca. And I was very, very scared and thought I was crazy for doing it uh, but it really changed my life I had the most beautiful healing experience the first time um, it was really very gentle and uh, very play-like and it reminded me of my my true essence my childlike essence that I kind of had forgotten about and um, that was the start of yeah, my 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 world changing and my world kind of becoming um, yeah much more much more inward focused and uh, and I, I got fascinated by plant medicine. That really was the, was the start of it. Um, and um, yeah, I for for years uh, I would sit in ceremony and I would see what facilitators were doing, and I was like. God, I love sitting in ceremony, but I would never, ever want to be a facilitator or never want to run a business that, that does this stuff. Um, yeah, just dealing with people's emotions and outbursts. And um, yeah, it's not, not easy. And I really enjoyed my own little cocoon, my, my own healing process. Uh, but yeah, no aspiration whatsoever to do anything, anything else with it. Um, until in uh, 2018, 19, I went to Peru uh, all by myself. Um, I lived in London at the time. I came from a very corporate <laughs> background. Oh boy, and, hold on one uh, second. I'm sorry. Yeah. Hold on one sure. second. Oh gosh, heavens. Yeah, so until 2018, 2019, uh, I went to a retreat in Peru all by myself. Um, it's about three hours outside of Pucallpa uh, by boat. <laughs> and there was no mobile phone reception. So part of me thought that I absolutely had lost my mind at that point. <laughs> I came from a very corporate background and... Um, lived in London, lived a London life, and then went on to do something crazy like that. Um, I know for some people that's not crazy, that's <laughs> an adventure. For me it was like adventure and craziness. Um, and yeah, so I was there for, for a couple of weeks at this retreat, and it's six ayahuasca ceremonies. And, uh, and during that, during that time where there was no distraction, no, no, no laptops, <laughs> no mobile phone or social media, nothing, just lots of reading and walking and um, journaling. I, uh, I, I suddenly thought, oh, you know, I'd love to really share this with my family and with my friends. But it's never really that I would recommend going because um, all the retreats that I had been to after that point, that was all something that I didn't think worked very well. Either the fruit wasn't great or the location wasn't great or the facilitation could have been better, in, in my humble opinion. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, and the whole preparation and integration uh, surrounding our retreats uh, were really missing for me and um, 
And I felt that all the retreats that I had attended up to that point weren't particularly accessible for people completely new to plant medicines, to psychedelic experiences. Um, and so uh, I came up with the idea of FICA. Yeah, and I, first of all, I thought, oh, I'm just gonna run one ceremony, one retreat, see how it goes. If I enjoy it, I might create a business out of it. If I don't, then I will just, you know, keep it at that. And so I, I held one ayahuasca retreat in the Netherlands, uh, six months later. Um, some of my good friends attended, even my mother came along. <laughs> it was the first psychedelic experience. And um, yeah, it was really, it was really beautiful. Um, my parents have, uh, it was my parents' uh, business. They, they own a, a b and in the, in the Dutch countryside. And I was in the summer and um, yeah, we, we had a chef coming over from London, made beautiful foods. Um, we had a, um, a psychologist uh, running, running the ceremonies at that point. And uh, yeah, it was really, it's really nice and beautiful. And um, my mother got so much from it. Uh, my friends had got so much from it. It was really a really life-changing experience for the people that um, that took part. And um, yeah, it made me realize that you know that's that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to create this organization that makes um, it really accessible for people to experience these ceremonies. Right, yeah. right. And you know, it's so interesting because. But someone might go on your website and they're like, okay, like, look at this beautiful website or, oh, look at the um, different ceremonies or services or locations that they offer, but they don't necessarily understand fully like the catalyst, right? And, you know, as we go back in your journey, there you are, 2016, you think that you are moving forward in a relationship and, and yeah. making all the plans. And there is something that happens inside of us, whether male or female or, or um, you know, regardless of the makeup of the relationship, that mm -hmm. when what we thought something was going to be is no longer what it's going to be, or it just, it feels like poof, it all disappeared, that sometimes that really does shake us at our core, or it'll often trigger our old stuff that had been sitting dormant way in the back. Yeah, 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 absolutely. You are telling us that, you know, you had this catalyst that brought you to your knees. And it's about like, okay, you started to go on this journey and you're like, okay, I'm going from reading this one book and starting some microdosing and, and having these experiences and then wanting to share them, wanting to make those connections for other people, wanting to make it accessible for other people. Mm -hmm. And I always find that fascinating, Ava, is that like a lot of times something that's beautiful comes from the ashes, right? Or what at that time felt like the ashes. Yes. It felt like this. Yes. The ashes for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what did you learn? I mean, you know, if you don't mind me asking the behind the scenes, like what did you actually learn about yourself that, you know, it was at one point you had a narrative in 2016 about yourself or about that relationship and what over the last five six years like what have you actually learned about yourself oh <laughs> i don't know <laughs> that's, that's i'm joking <laughs> um not much <laughs> um yeah goodness where to start oh wow it's, it's to me that's a really big big question to to answer like I am not the person that I that I was back then. Right. I was, right. I, if I can visualize it, it feels like back then I was this big, and now I am much more expensive. I can I can share with you a little bit what happened in my outer life, mm -hmm. which is a reflection of my inner life. So during that time, I. Um, my work started to really pick up. So I worked as a, as a freelance consultant. I had one great, great project after another, after another, after another. 
the work kept on coming in. Um, really kind of, I, I became a lot more co confident in myself and I really started to in, enjoy my life a lot more. So um, yeah, I went on holidays, went uh, partying with my friends, made some really wonderful friendships then joined fit for service programs started to travel to the us uh, a lot uh, eventually uh, picked up my my laptop and did my consulting work in mexico um so that was in 2019 and um built up a lot of friendships there met my met my partner there as well um and uh, we're still together we have a, a child now, uh, so I am a mother <laughs> in the end. Uh, he's he's four months. Yeah. Wow. Uh, wow. So my life has completely and utterly changed. Um, I'm back in the Netherlands for now. Um, uh, we moved back here uh, in August for the birth of my son. Um, but uh, yeah, looking to move to the to the United States at at, at some point early next year. Uh, so we're expanding Vika in in the US now. Um, so I'm looking to move there. So my my life has completely changed from you know a person that really thought that her life had come to an end. Um, thought they would never meet someone ever again ever <laughs> again. Um, never have children again. God, I was thinking about it the other day. I actually met a psychiatrist and um, my doctor referred me to, to him because I was very upset. It's like, oh, you should meet this psychiatrist friend of mine. He's great. And this psychiatrist actually said to me, yeah, well, you, you're, you know, nearing the end of your 30s, so you probably never will have children again. Not very nice to see. <laughs> my <laughs> thing. <laughs> So Great I've to be problem. talking to you. Right? Yeah, yeah, I felt so much better after that. Oh god. Uh, yeah, really, really felt like there was no future for me uh, at all. To my, the, the world feels so much more expensive now. Um, it feels like it's full of opportunities, and um, and yeah, I've, I, I feel. A lot more connected with my with my true self, my true purpose. Um, feel a lot more connected with my family, with my friends. Um, I'm I'm a lot more humble. <laughs> I can laugh at myself. I'm I'm really I'm not perfect at all. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> working on that. Um, but I can I can see myself for, for for what I am, and I and I can accept it. Uh, for the most part and I've become uh, uh, yeah a, a much more spiritual person I, I meditate every single day I right. um, the ceremonies that I attend are my are my religion and um, yeah my myself growth my 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 spiritual growth is is what I what I live for right um, it's, yeah it's it to me it is so interesting because you're right there was a narrative at one point of like the world as I know it is over um and therefore it's very easy for us to slip into that place of like the world is over um especially if we have a medical professional who's like you know better uh entire you know hang up your shoes because you're you're done dancing here um yeah. and and don't you know don't you want to like send a picture and say ha 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 <laughs> yeah. in some ways like, you do ultimately like you have the, not that it's important, but it's, it's the last laugh in the sense that you're living your life on your own terms. And it sounds to me, Eva, that especially relative to you getting into relationship with yourself, right? Mm -hmm. You spent the last few years getting into a deeper relationship with yourself. And because of that, that's afforded you to be able to have created a business and friendships and travel the world and be parts of communities. And, you know, I have a partner that's indicative of this person that you are right now, mm -hmm. not that person that you were five, six years ago, um, yeah. which brought forth uh, the life of a, of a new child and so yeah. much. 
has yeah. happened as a result of, and there's different pathways to getting into relationship with, with yourself, but it sounds like plant medicine was especially uh, powerful for you. Mm, yeah, no, absolutely. Well, uh, uh, I am reading a lot of Ram Dass. I've, 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 uh, yeah, I have a love for his, for his work and his writing and his voice. And um, I'm reading, yeah, I'm reading one book after another after another at the moment. And I think he describes it really, really well. His, his spiritual journey started with plant medicines, um, started with psychedelics. It, it opened a door for him. It opened a door for him and gave him a different perspective on um, yeah, who he was and what's possible. Um, but I didn't, didn't got him to a stage of, of, of real connectiveness and, and, and joy and, and presence in the here and now. That was really his, his trip to India and the spiritual practices that he picked up from there. And th that's, that's similar for, for me as in um, plant medicines, open up a door to me, open up a door to my heart, open up a door to my soul, if you believe in that. Um, and opened up my mind. <laughs> um, but what I, but what connects me now and what has taken me much deeper is my, is my spiritual practices kind of outside of plant, plant ceremonies. Yeah, yeah. And isn't it so amazing how we access that in different ways, right? Mm -hmm. Whether that's access it through an experience, it, uh, through an experience that we have, access it through who we surround ourselves with, access it, you know, to reiterate, like by way of the relationship that we have with ourselves. Mm -hmm. And it all makes a, a difference in the way in which we connect to our spirituality. Um, mm -hmm. And identifying that as, as but one of the many dimensions of ourselves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I'm also curious, so for everyone who's listening and then you've listened long enough and, and you've heard like, okay, like this is how she, you know, came to create the company. Um, you know, here's where her catalyst was, here's her, her aha, here's like the behind the scenes. And they're probably curious because we have had a couple of episodes um, talking about plant medicine, um, but not as yeah. specifically as with you today. So mm -hmm. for anyone who is curious and maybe with each different tradition, they have a different methodology, but could you educate us a little bit about what on earth is plant medicine? What on earth is the, the rituals around plant medicine and what would it be like to have a plant medicine experience? Yeah, sure. Um, it's, it's a big question. <laughs> uh, I, um, I can cover a few. Um, and, and please interject with questions and ask me to clarify if, if things aren't clear. You know, I live and breathe this all the time. So, um, yeah, uh, but I, I, I fully understand that not, not everybody, everybody does. Um, so, OK, let me let me start with plant medicines. Are. I mean, we call them medicines, but they are. Um, Yes, psychedelic plants, uh, or they are compounds of animals that contain psychedelic molecules. So let me kind of break that down a little bit. So we have, so at Vika, we work with uh, psilocybin uh, that uh, you can find in mushrooms and also in truffles. Uh, and these are not chocolate truffles. These are actually <laughs> truffles that grow uh, <laughs> at the roots of um, of mushrooms, um, and they are they are legal in the Netherlands. Um, so hence hence the reason that we that we work with them. Um, and then we have Bouvalvarius, which is the um, which comes out of the glands of um, uh, a toad. It's a venom, it's toad venom, and it contains 5-MeO uh, DMT, which is by far the most powerful psychedelic uh, available to, to mankind. Um, 
And we work with uh, POT, which contains uh, mescaline. Um, and uh, yeah, they, they, all, they all work on different parts of our brain and therefore we all have slightly different experiences with them. Um, if, you, if you take them in a therapeutic uh, setting, and, and, and let me just precast this by, these are our beliefs. This is not scientifically proven. Um, then a lot of things that science can't prove is just because they can't do it yet. It doesn't necessarily mean that it uh, doesn't exist or it's not true. So anyway. <laughs> um, so when you take uh, psychedelics in a therapeutic setting, um, I you have a facilitator, you may listen to a playlist, you take these, these psychedelic compounds, it could be a mushroom, it could be a uh, bouffe of various, um, uh, and you, you have a certain experience and that for a lot of people that helps to alleviate blockages or feel more connected or have much more of a sense of, of purpose in life and what they need to do, get answers to questions that they, um, they might have had for a long time. It can be different. For, it's different for everyone. It's different every time. Um, I mean, we, we, call, we call that uh, a therapeutic kind of use of... Sure. Uh, yeah, sure. And that's and why there's a facility, and I don't mean to interrupt you, um, yeah. but for anyone who's listening, that's why um, Ava's talking so much about facilitators. This isn't a matter of like you roll into a head shop and you pick up a, a couple of psychedelics and you roll back out again. There's a level yeah. of, and for their belief systems, uh, there's a level of responsibility um, and ritual and tradition yeah. that goes along with that. Um, so I just want to make that little clarifier for anyone. I know Ava lives in this world, but for anyone who's, who's like me, that's like rolling in off the bus and brand new around here. Um, I think it's important for us to, to know that she keeps using the word facilitator for a reason, because there's a responsibility and a relationship that's taught uh, about the medicine regardless, yeah. you know, according to the, a couple of the different medicines. Yeah. Yeah, and I and I do say facilitators. And facilitators can be anyone. It, it can be someone with a psychology background, but it also can be someone that you know has has facilitated many psychedelic uh, experiences and calls themselves facilitator. You can also do a uh, facilitator, uh, psychedelic facilitator training uh, uh, as well. But but it's it's the the point that I was going to make. So at we at Vika are working. Um, with these psychedelic compounds in slightly different ways. So we work with traditions and we work with ceremony. And so our belief around that is, is that you don't only work with the psychedelic compounds, which obviously um, uh, you, you can greatly benefit from, not all people can, but you, can, you may greatly benefit from this. Um, you also, in, in these more uh, traditional ceremonies, you also work with, with um, energies and spirits that come with these traditions. And so the, um, the healings and transformations that people can experience in those ceremonies can be even more profound. Um, and that's the reason why we work with traditions with uh facilitators that um have been trained in in working with these psychedelic compounds uh from from over many many generations um and and so they have fine-tuned working with with this um yeah over Hundred, hundreds of years, thousands of years, um, and of true experts in this field. Um, so that's what we that's that's what we do, and that's I, I just wanted to make the, the difference. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. So that's something I'm also curious about. So I know that you said that um, you facilitate uh, ceremonies in the Netherlands, in the United States, and in Mexico. Are yeah. there certain traditions or facilitators? that are either native to the land or well-versed in, um, in the medicine that 
uh, would lend itself to the experience. I'm curious about that. Yeah, so um, we work with facilitators that come from uh, different traditions, um, not necessarily from the land in which we facilitate uh, uh, the, the ceremonies, uh, but they are coming from the traditions uh, from the from the, the of the uh, psychedelics that we use. So to give you an example. Um, we are working uh, with the uh, Mazatec tradition uh, for psilocybin mushrooms and, and truffles. Uh, the Mazatec tradition uh, became famous to, through Maria Sabina. Um, she was a medicine woman in, based in Mexico and she acquainted the West uh, with magic mushrooms back in the 50s and 60s. Um, and her, so that tradition um, works with uh, the mushrooms in darkness mm. um, and songs are being sang and spirits are being called in uh, and um, healings are being performed for individuals. Um, it's a really very beautiful beautiful ceremony. Um, it starts in the evening around eight o'clock and goes on about three or four in the morning. Um, and yeah, um, I've, I've had, personally, I've had some really incredible experiences um, sitting, sitting with that, um, with that psychedelic, with that medicine, we call it medicine. Um, I um, I had a miscarriage uh, in 2019. <laughs> I have to, have to, yeah, look back on the dates. Yeah, 2019, and um, which was which was very sad. Yeah, um, so sorry. to become a mother <laughs> yeah. as soon as she became pregnant, and so losing losing that uh, losing that baby at eight weeks was uh, yeah was really devastating. Um, but in one of those, in one of the ceremonies, um, one of the travel ceremonies that we that we did with this tradition, uh, I I met um, the soul of my of my little baby boy, um, which was so so beautiful. Uh, yeah, he asked to to come through and um, become our family and. Um, uh, a few days after that, I uh, I was pregnant, so it went really it went really quickly, and uh, wow, yeah, it was, um, it was really really life changing, and it's and it's not uncommon that, um, yeah, people meet souls, that people meet uh, relatives uh, that have passed away um, during those ceremonies. It's uh, it can be really healing and. Um, yeah, very, very loving <laughs> and, and, and humbling, I feel sure. as well. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. So, uh, Eva, like, who would you say that um, if someone's been thinking about medicine and, and they're curious, you know, to learn more, like, where would you say that they get started? Or who would you say is somebody who, who could be drawn to the medicine? Or medicine's going to be great for someone who is navigating. Um, anxiety or depression or like who is this for and how would they get started yeah I, I mean so we we need to be very careful uh the way that we that we talk about psychedelics it's it's still um experimental medicine right it's it's not approved by the fda <laughs> um and so we can't really legally say it's it's, it's medicine um, and so we would we would say it's for personal and spiritual development, uh, and and that's probably the best way to to, to look at it. Um, uh, so I do say medicine, I do say healing, but but uh, yeah, for anyone that's listening, this really should be looked at from from a spiritual development and personal development perspective. And the different medicines to try out. Um, 
uh, I think it's really important that you that you connect with uh, with the people that are offering it to you, that you know where they are trained. You want to know um, who their teacher was, so you can backtrack where um, where they got their knowledge from. Because it's really really important that you understand um, who you who you're going to open up to and um, in these ceremonies. Uh, and it needs to feel safe and it needs to feel comfortable. Um, so the place where it's done needs to feel comfortable for you as well. And in terms of kind of medicines, uh, I mean, if you're completely new to, to psychedelics, um, one that's probably more easy and more accessible, I'd say, uh, are magic mushrooms. Uh, Buf alvarius, uh, which comes from the totes, um, is uh, by far the most um, yeah, potent psychedelic. Um, people experience complete oneness with the universe, uh, complete destruction of identity. Um, and uh, it can be really beautiful and it can be really unsettling for some people. It's, it's, it's a very short ceremony about around kind of 40, 45 minutes long, but the integration of that ceremony um, can literally take weeks, months, uh, and sometimes even, sometimes even years. And so do not step into that lightly. Um, you really need to be ready for that. Um, with uh with peyote um it's a gentle it's a gentle medicine um we call it the grandfather medicine and it really feels like that <laughs> I, uh, it feels loving and and caring uh, when you take it the, the ceremonies however that we conduct are a little bit more challenging so we we uh we run ceremonies that last about 10 to 14 hours and um uh, and they're done around a fire and uh, you, you basically sit in meditation with your attention on the fire for 10 to, 10 to 14 hours. Um, I mean, it's, it's interrupted through, through singing and prayers and it's a very communal ceremony. But um, if you get lost in your mind, um it can be a very very long medicine so um i think it's also really important to yeah, understand what ceremonial setting uh medicines are being taken and and really understand what you are ready ready to do and step into yeah yeah but it's so interesting like listening to you to talk yeah it's just reiterating more and more for me and hopefully everyone else is listening that if this is a path that you think that you want to go down or you you have questions about like this is something that it's you can you need to do more research around um and you need to get yourself connected with some you know someone or a company such as Vika that could really help to support you in this endeavor, this journey that you want to go on, um, because there's lots of, uh, of different elements for you to, to learn and to get curious about, but to have support, um, when and doing this endeavor, it's, it makes all the difference in the world, right. Rather than us just flying blindly into things, um, which is a lot of the unknown, right. Certainly a lot of unknown, mm -hmm. but to be on this personal and spiritual journey, um, I think it's incredible that you've built this company and, you know, um, and I'm, we'll make sure that we put the link into the show notes for everyone to, to check out. Um, as I was looking through and I, I recognize some familiar faces of some of your facilitators. Yep. And, um, <laughs> and it just, to me, it, it said like how top notch that you um, have created this not only safe environment, but well-supported, well-researched so that people who want to have an experience can do so in the safest manner possible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's really, really important. I think, you know, you do have to remember that when you, when you take psychedelics, when you take plant medicine, um, or entheogens, as some people like to call it, you really, you're opening up doors you you opening up doors to your unconscious we like to think that you open up doors to other dimensions as well and it maybe sounds really far out and 
before I I ever sat with plant medicines, I would have uh, laughed at it. Um, but you are you are <laughs> you are opening up doors to areas and um, energies that you haven't experienced before, and it's it's really quite quite something, and and not to be. Yeah, dealt with lightly so um yeah track with caution and um if you decide to uh, walk this path and try it out one day you know make sure you know who the person is you're doing it with and that is in the right you know right place for you and it feels right <laughs> i love it i love it how amazing just so amazing and so powerful so uh ava before we wrap up um where do you see the company growing to? Like, what's next for you guys? Yeah, so we are expanding to the US. So we will be uh, starting holding ceremonies, there, uh, running retreats there in, in September, from September onwards, uh, working with peyote, uh, working with both alfarias, and working with, with mushrooms. Mm -hmm. And we do that through a church organization, so we can actually do this legally um and um and it's, it will be supported by a lot of uh preparation and integration support as well so um will be in good hands with us mm -hmm. um and yes we'll be we're looking to build build a center dam and um uh, yeah we would love to build centers elsewhere as well we're based out of the netherlands already um, but yeah, if, if there's more, more ask for this, we, uh, we look at the expense, uh, in, in, in perhaps Canada, in Mexico. Yeah. Very cool. Very cool. That's yeah. so awesome. Um, so Eva, uh, for everyone who's curious and they want to check out more, and I know we said that we're going to drop the website, uh, into the show notes. Um, but tell everyone where you're hanging out, where can they find you? Where can they learn more information? Yeah, so uh, you can find us uh, on our website, mm -hmm. uh, which uh, I'm sure you, you'll share, right? Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, definitely yeah. show notes. Yeah. How about the favorite uh, social media platform that they can find? Yeah, you? so we are on, on IG and it's um, uh, hyphen biker hyphen. And when I typed it in for some reason in, in the in, in uh, the type pads, it changed it to italics. I don't know why. And I tried it again in WhatsApp and it's exactly the same. So it's really strange. Um, but yeah, you can find us on, uh, on, on, on Instagram as well. So cool. we're just we're just there for now. And you can sign up for our newsletter and then you'll get a lot more information. Yeah. Awesome. 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 Ava, thank you so much for joining us for today and for educating us on something that can, can be rather taboo and that people don't really want to talk about, or they, they feel like they might be judged if they share their experiences. And in fact, just this past weekend, um, I did a sweat lodge and so many people were like, Oh, you know, was there, was there, you know, was there drugs? Were there not drugs? I wouldn't want to do that. There's drugs. I'm like, okay, everyone calm down. Cause all there was was stones and sweat. So we would just calm down, yeah. <laughs> but there is such taboo. And I think that, um, when, when we focus on the alleged taboo that there is, because when we talk ancient traditions, there wasn't a taboo. There was more of a sacredness and a ritual, um, yeah. around medicine ceremonies. Um, but that it's, I think that when we focus so much on the taboo, we miss out on the learning and mm -hmm. this might be for you. It might not be for you. This might be the podcast that you listen to that. You're just like, oh my gosh, yes, yes. And yes. And this also might be the podcast that you listen to that. You're just like, Hey, the next time someone tells me about Bufo, I'm actually going to be a little bit more educated. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Frogs got it. Right. Like they're, you know, they're, they're going to know a little bit more. And so it's just about, at least for me, and I'm sure for you, about keeping an open mind, get yourself informed, get yourself curious, keep an open mind. And if it's for you, awesome. You have a new resource Call Ava. Um, and if it's not for you, well, it's, you can remain curious in listening to the, the journeys and the stories of other people. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's really important that you that you listen to yourself and you know you do this when you when you call to it and right. kind of feel right. Yeah. 
Absolutely. Absolutely. Awesome. I'm, I'm, I'm curious about your um, about your sweat lodge. Oh, so, so wild. No, so, so, so wild. I actually um, uh, put out a blog this week about it. Um, they built a sweat lodge in my backyard. Uh, a, a friend of mine was doing a sweat lodge with one of her mentors. And, uh -huh. um, and there, she was looking for land. And I happened to have land. So I said, you know, what do you think about this? And she said, oh, it looks fantastic. So um, it was of the Lakota tradition. Yeah. And it was yeah. Very cool. We had a wonderful time. And I had done a Temescal in Tulum before. Yeah. yeah. Um, so there was a lot of similarities in terms of the rounds and in terms yeah. of the sweating. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, I, I feel like for me, I'm a person who, who does well with heat. Um, so I didn't have any, you know, dehydration related um, negative effects. For me, I just kind of came out feeling brand new again. Yeah. Oh, wonderful. We actually building a sweat lodge in our garden at the moment. It's my my partner uh, runs sweat lodge ceremonies, also Lakota tradition. Oh, yeah. Cool. <laughs> so funny. Small world. So I, saw, I saw that. I was like, I need to ask her about that. Yeah, and we actually do also do a ceremony with peyote in the sweat lodge, which is one of the Lakota uh, Lakota ceremonies. Yeah. So cool. It's less hot. <laughs> I mean, we do that. Yeah. Yeah. Right. There are so many different paths to opening yeah. ourselves, enlightening ourselves, getting curious and living this one precious life that we have. So I think that it's, it's incredibly powerful for us to remain open to see what there is to see. Right. Yeah. I, back to in the blog, I wrote, and we'll throw the blog in the show notes as well. Um, in the blog, I also said like, I mean, I don't see myself, you know, hosting sweat lodges on the weekends. Like that's, that's not my path, but it was great to get out of my day-to-day -day routine and do something new. And that's what, we, in the blog, that's what I was really encouraging people to do is just like, hey, you're on autopilot, like do something else, do something different, shake it up yeah. a little bit. Why the heck not? Mm -hmm. That's an interrupts. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Ava, so good to jam with you. And I definitely look forward to, um, to having everybody follow and check out Viga and, uh, and get curious. So thank you for coming on and sharing with me. Story. Bye. <laughs> Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.